matters. An interactive program brought to you by MTA International. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Faith Matters, an interactive program where you, our viewers, on MTA, set the agenda. Well, what can I say? Jazakumullah, thank you to all of you who've been writing in via the email or indeed the fax, sending in your questions about religions of uh, issues of religion, faith, or indeed philosophical and more contemporary issues as well. And in that regard, thank you from all of us here at MTA to be part and parcel of this program. On today's program, I'm delighted to be joined by a very esteemed panel of scholars within the Amdiya Muslim community. And if I may begin by saying assalamu alaikum to all of you gentlemen and welcoming you to Faith Matters. If I can start with introductions, first of all, to my immediate left, I have Azhar Hanif Sahib from the United States. He's the actual uh, missionary in the South uh, Midwest region of the United States. It's a big country, so plenty of regions there. Welcome, Hanif Saab, to Faith Matters. Um, next to Hanif Saab is, of course, our very respected Atawamadji Brashid Saab, Imam of the London Mosque, missionary in charge here in the United Kingdom. Assalamu alaikum, Imam Saab. Welcome uh, back to the program. And we're also delighted to be joined by Naseem Madhi Sahib from uh, Canada. He's the missionary in charge there, Madhi Saab. You're welcome to Faith Matters for today. Um, again, viewers, thank you very much for the questions you've been putting in. Um, certainly, we've got a wide range of questions we're going to be covering off in the next hour. And we hope that from some of the answers you get today, do write in again. And just to begin with, for those of you who haven't yet noted down the email address, I'll repeat it for you right at the start. It's faithmatters, that's one word, at mta.tv faithmatters at mta.tv and those of you resorting to the facts the facts number is 44 for the UK 208 687 8037 that's 44 for the UK 208 687 8037 and with that if I may I'll come to my panel we've received various questions um, from across the world in today from Pakistan through to Africa and indeed right here on home soil in the United Kingdom but I'll start off with the first question if I may that comes from Aftab Ahmed uh, Saab from Karachi in Pakistan thank you Aftab Saab for your question and it actually is one of those issues which is often raised by people of faith and indeed probably by m more people of no faith who actually asked this issue about natural disasters. And the question is, if we consider natural disasters like floods and earthquakes, etc., some regard it as a way of punishment to mankind for disobeying God. Aftab goes on to write that isn't it unfair that other living beings also suffer, and the animal kingdom, for example. And if we don't consider it as punishment, then what is the purpose? of inflicting such a pointless thing upon us which brings so much suffering. Uh, Mehdi Saab, if I could come to you to perhaps pick up on that question the to begin with. The question of suffering is uh, a very vast subject and uh, in a few minutes uh, it will be very, very difficult to, to give uh, the answer to satisfy the questioner. Uh, first of all, every natural disaster is not a punishment. Um, you know, in, in the last uh, thousands of years, uh, Every year there are hundred thousands or millions of floods, but the flood which was uh, during the time of Noah as a new al-Islam mm -hmm. was a punishment because God warned that if you don't accept my messenger, you will be punished. Uh, every earthquake is not a punishment, but the, the earthquake which was uh, during the time of Lot or Prophet uh, Luther al-Islam was a punishment. So first of all, this should be noted that every natural disaster is not a punishment. Uh, to understand this uh, question of suffering, uh, if we just uh, quickly talk about uh, evolution of life on Earth, uh, it has taken one billion years and uh, we agree with the scientists and the Holy Quran, um, you know, accepts this idea that uh, there was uh, evolution, uh, but not a blind evolution as uh, the scientists say or as, the, as Darwin says. Uh, it was by choice and mm -hmm. it was controlled by God. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih in his book uh, Revelation, Rationality, Knowledge and Truth has discussed this and uh, he comes to a point where he says that if there was no suffering there would have been no progress, no evolution. 
So suffering was a very important component of uh, evolution. So the life has evolved when the primitive life was being, uh, you know, um, eliminated. So death is also a punishment, uh, is, is also a suffering, but uh, that death has played a very important role. So in Surah Al-Mulk, uh, where we say that uh, in the very beginning, we say that uh, the concept of survival of the fittest is mentioned. There Allah uh, mentions uh, death first and life afterwards because that was the m most important thing in this uh, evolution. Now, uh, after coming of the promised Messiah, salam, because uh, he is uh, representing the Holy Prophet وسلم, who is a universal mm -hmm. prophet, uh, he says that Allah has sent me as uh, uh, a representative of uh, Hazrat Sallallahu according to his prophecies and uh, he has delivered the message to the whole world and he says that now after my arrival now everything will be a punishment and uh, he, he quotes the, the verse Ma kunna mu'azzabina hatta nabasa rasoola that uh, we don't punish anybody until we send a messenger so he talks of uh, a great uh, calamities and earthquakes and uh, floods and famine and you know pandemics and etc etc. Uh, so uh, a person who dies in or, or who is uh, who suffers uh, is not necessarily uh, a person who is punished by God. There could be innocent people. Uh, who oh, are who, who, yeah. <laughs> so a person who dies mm -hmm. uh, and he is an innocent uh, he will he will go to to paradise mm -hmm. so going from this world to a better place is not a punishment and and, uh, and then uh, there is another angle and that is how, why we see suffering um, the 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 concept of suffering is that uh, we are tried by god there are trials and tribulations and if we don't go through this we cannot evolve our spiritual senses we cannot develop spiritual um, you know capabilities mm -hmm. we, we, we how can we if everything is perfect in this world if there's no disease there's no hunger and everything is perfect so how can we show patience and steadfastness how can we show sympathy and empathy to, to anybody? How can we um, show love to those people who, who are hungry and thirsty? So the Prophet, uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, was the greatest prophet. Uh, according to Hazrat Muhammad وسلم, he lost 11 kids in infancy during his life. Why, why he had to suffer? Because he wanted to set an example of uh, patience and steadfastness. So this is uh, part of this grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, also you, you, you must not forget that uh, all these changes which are uh, taking place either are because of man-made uh, problems you know the um, destruction of rainforests and you know you know pollution and all these kind of things, or they are part of a grand scheme of things. And because of these changes, uh, bigger things are which are f beneficial to humanity uh, are are being created. So because all the minerals and all this, they, they, they the, because of these changes, uh, humanity is getting the benefit of that. So anybody who suffers uh, is not uh, being punished. Uh, so 